no one comes to Crater Lake to look at trees. Then again, it's the trees, particularly white bark pine, that frame almost every view of the lake. It's a view that won't last. The way I see it right now, the extinction of white bark pine in the park is imminent. I, I expect us to lose about 90% of the white bark pine in this park, at least. Park ecologist Dr. Michael Murray says small warts on white bark pine trees are as deadly as chainsaws. The actual fungus is making itself visible to us. This is how it gets its name, blister rust. The rust color of the fungus, the fungus is actually destroying the living tissue underneath the bark there and the tree will die from this point up. Out in the middle of Crater Lake, Wizard Island offers a window on the future. The trees on top were killed by mistletoe. It was a natural local outbreak. Blister rust is different. This fungus never lets up. Michael imagines a worst case scenario in which all of Crater Lake's white bark pines look like this in only 50 years. The park's white bark pine have been dying for decades and this is kind of what we see here is an accumulation of death. What we're going to see is a lot more of the rim looking like this site here where white bark pine is dropping out of the picture. This whole thing started when a nurseryman in Canada ordered pine trees from France. That was a hundred years ago. But the trees he got carried a killer fungus completely foreign to forests of North America. White bark pine from British Columbia to California have been falling like dominoes ever since. This isn't just a tree issue. This is an issue of an ecosystem. There are places in this park that are so high in elevation with a harsh environment that only one tree species can survive at those places. And that's the white bark pine. And you can just see, the higher we go, the more white bark pine takes advantage and starts to take over as far as the proportion of other tree species. White bark pine forest Most of these trees and 20% of the pine park wide are already infected. On the summit of Mount Watchman, the situation is at its worst. It's hard to tell right now, but we're looking at a bunch of diseased trees right now. And unless you get used to it and train your eye, you don't realize it. So most of the public wouldn't realize that most of these trees in front of us, or about half of them, are actually infected. And unfortunately, the disease tends to wipe out the tops of the trees first, which is where most of the cone-producing branches are. So right away, there's an impact on wildlife. One highly visible victim is the Clark's nutcracker. White bark seeds keep nutcrackers alive in the spring when visitors are few and far between. The trees are likewise dependent on the birds. Without the nutcracker, the white bark pine simply couldn't exist. And they actually are adapted with their strong beaks to pry those seeds loose from the cones. They'll fly to places across the landscape and place those seeds in the ground. And when we look across the landscape, everywhere we see a white bark pine, sometime long ago, uh, Clark's nutcracker was there and planted that tree. Unfortunately, there's nothing anyone on the park staff can do to stop trees from dying. There's no doubt that we're being beat here. Um, it's, it's frustrating, you know, as an ecologist that, uh, you know, these diseases, these non-native pathogens that come from far away just don't play by the rules. This is affectionately referred to as the torture device. Michael, nevertheless, has launched an end run around blister rust. Michael and another biologist, Aaron Johnston, target healthy looking trees whose cones may hold the key to genetic resistance. Well, it might take me a second to find a route up here. But to get to the cones, Aaron has to work his way to the top of a 30-foot white bark pine. And we're going to put cone enclosures around the cones. The enclosures keep nutcrackers and squirrels at bay. 
Once the cone matures, Aaron will climb the tree again to collect the seeds. How is it up there? Feels a lot higher than it looks. I think we'd be lucky if we collected from 50 trees. That's pretty ambitious. Seeds are grown in the young pines at the Dorina Forest Research Center. Here they're infected intentionally with spores that cause blister rust. These are the spores that will be dropping on the pines that will infect the pine trees. We collect uh, leaves of currants and gooseberries from the wild that are infected with the disease of the blister rust. Currants and gooseberries exist in the forest everywhere whitebark pine is found. Blister rust can transfer to trees only after spores mature on these leaves. In this converted garage, Richard Snezko has created a makeshift lab to simulate those forest conditions. Leaves are placed over seedlings to increase chance of infection. And fog simulates the cool, wet climate that causes spores to drop. Within a few hours, hundreds of seedlings will come under attack. In a few years, most will die from the infection. But the point is to find trees that can survive an attack of the fungus. Most of these are actually sugar and western white pine. The timber industry spent millions to save them from blister rust because of their importance as lumber. White bark is primarily a wildlife tree and never had a cash value. It had few allies until Crater Lake National Park stepped in two years ago. Richard only had sugar and white pines on hand to demonstrate what will happen to white bark pine after years of screening. There used to be 120 seedlings in this box, and they represented 12 different parent trees in the wild. Now we have only seven seedlings or trees left. They all come off of one parent tree, and that parent tree has a complete type of resistance that affects the needles but does not affect the stem. This is sugar pine, and this is one that has been killed after we infected with blister rust, and that's kind of parallel to what's happening at Crater Lake over a longer period of time. Here's some resistant sugar pine that we have screened for resistance, and, and we hope to do similar with white bark pine, so we hope that this is what you see at Crater Lake in the future. White bark pine that are very healthy, just like these sugar pine are very healthy, even when blister rust is present. Disease resistant trees will be replanted throughout Crater Lake National Park. It will be a hundred years before they look like the old growth forest in the park today. Until then, Every surviving tree gets special attention, protected from even minor disturbances like trail work. Each is a reminder of how much work Michael has ahead of him. Oh man, one of these has blister rust. Jeez, I didn't notice this before, but you can see the fruiting bodies down here. It's swelling. It's nice that they, they roped this thing off, but it's gonna be dead in five or six years.